Do not leave any of it till morning. If some is left till morning, you must burn it. This ends the Old Testament reading. The New Testament reading comes from the book of Romans, chapter 13, verses 8 through 10. Let no debt remain outstanding except the continuing debt to love one another. For whoever loves others has fulfilled the law. The commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not covet, and whatever other command there may be are summed up in this one command. Love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no harm to a neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfillment of the law. May the Lord add his blessing to the reading of his holy word. Let's pray. Well, we thank you for uh, your word this morning and, and the story from Exodus as the Israelites were, were preparing to leave Egypt in haste and the instructions to them on how to prepare the Passover lamb. Give us insight into the symbolism uh, of this passage of Scripture, and then how that relates to the power of love, God's love in our lives. We ask, Lord, that you would enlighten us, and through your Holy Spirit, teach us your word. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. We hear uh, the phrase... The blood of the Lamb, both in the Old Testament and in the New Testament. And of course, it, it appears there in the Old Testament, in the book of Exodus, when God instructed Moses and Aaron on how to prepare this first Passover meal. After nine plagues, the Pharaoh still refused to let the Israelites go. So this tenth plague would be the straw that broke the camel's back. God was sending a plague upon the lamb, and every firstborn animal and every firstborn human would die from this plague. Now, Israel's salvation and Israel's deliverance would come through the blood of the lamb. God told Moses to instruct each family to take this lamb without blemish, slaughter it at twilight, and then they were to take the blood of the lamb and to put it on the doorpost and on the lintel of their houses. They had to be ready to move out quickly. So God instructed them to roast this lamb and uh, be ready to go, have your, your loins girded, your belt on, everything ready to go because you're going to leave in haste because the Pharaoh is going to send you out of here once this plague hits. And so uh, God said this to Moses, Exodus 12, 13, the blood will be a sign for you on the houses where you are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. No destructive plague will touch you when I struck Egypt. So that's why the meal is called the Passover meal. Uh, when God saw that the Israelite families were putting the blood on the doorpost and, and the little and the lintel, uh, God saw that as a sign that they were trusting in God for their deliverance and their salvation. So that was. That act was a sign of faith. Now, of course, the, the plan worked. The death of the firstborn crushed Pharaoh's will. He told the Israelites to get out, leave their country. So in haste, they, they finished the Passover meal. They gathered all their things together. They headed out in the wilderness toward the promised land. Now, after God gave all these instructions to Moses, this is what God said. Exodus 12, 14. He said, this is a day you are to commemorate. For generations to come, you shall celebrate it as a festival to the Lord, a lasting ordinance. So this 
salvation and this deliverance through the blood of the Lamb became Israel's most important festival. And today it still is Israel's most important festival. Because of this Passover, God could lead Israel to the promised land, and there God could fulfill the promise God had made to Abraham to bless the entire world through this nation, this a nation of Israel. Because through this nation, God would send a Messiah, and then this Messiah would offer salvation and deliverance to the entire world. Now, this is what's interesting. On the day before Jesus was crucified, he met with his disciples in the upper room to celebrate what? The Passover. He met with them to celebrate the Passover. As I said, the Passover became Israel's most important festival. At that time, Jesus presented to his disciples what is called the New Covenant, which he said would be sealed in his blood, shed for them for the forgiveness of sins. He said that he would become this Passover lamb. He would become the genuine, the authentic Passover lamb. His body would be broken. His blood would be shed for all people, for all people in the world who would trust in God's salvation and deliverance through that lamb. The writer of Hebrews ex explained it this way. Hebrews 10, 14. For by one sacrifice, he has made perfect forever those who are being made holy. Then Jesus said this to his disciples. A new command I give to you. Love one another as I have loved you. So you must love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you love one another. So, the first Passover, and then all of those other Passover celebrations, year after year after year, led to this moment. The symbolism of the blood of the Lamb, the sacrifice, the shedding of the blood for forgiveness and deliverance culminated in Jesus becoming the authentic, uh, uh, authentic lamb, the one sacrificed on the cross. Then Jesus revealed the heart of this Exodus account, and really it is the heart of the entire book of Exodus, and that can be summed up in one word. And that one word is love. Have you ever heard this verse before? John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. And then 17 says this. For God did not send His Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through Him. So God's plan of salvation through the blood of the Lamb and deliverance from slavery to the ways of this world unleashed the power of God's love. God's love for us, our love for God, and our love for each other. Jesus said, through the power of this love that we're going to share with the world, through the power of this love, people will discover that you are my disciples. Now, further on in the New Testament, this is what the Apostle, uh, the Apostle Paul said about this new covenant of love to the church of Rome. Romans 13 8, Paul said, Let no debt remain outstanding except the continuing debt to love one another. For whoever loves others has fulfilled the law. So through this new covenant, Paul tells us 
that God has liberated us. God has set us free to love. And all you have to do is, is uh, observe what is happening in the world to get a, a, a better understanding of what Paul is talking about. All the hatred in the world divides. All the hatred in the world destroys and obliterates. But love builds and love restores and, and love renews. We see the destruction of the fabric of our society because of all the hatred that's around us. In fact, every war and its catastrophic effect on the world has its source in hatred. But on the contrary, love is the ground on which everything grows and on which everything flourishes. Neighborhoods, as I shared with the kids, neighborhoods where people care for each other and love each other are the best neighborhoods to grow up in. Schools, where the, where the teachers love their kids and, and the administrators and the teachers get along with each other. Those are the best schools to send your kids. You know they're going to be taken care of. Churches, where, where the congregations care for each other and love each other and, and give and sacrifice for each other. Those are the churches that grow. You see, the reason the gospel message of Jesus spread throughout the entire world like wildfire and turned history upside down is because the heart of the gospel message is we have been liberated to love. Through the Lamb of God, we are forgiven. We are given a new life. And now we love God. We love each other. We are bringing that love into the world, and that message is a message people hunger and thirst for. See, loving God and others activates love. When a person loves you, and you feel God's love through that person, it makes you want to love. It, it, it makes you want to bring forth God's love into this world and do something good. In, in this world. There are so many people out there who are feeling isolated. They, 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 are, they are feeling uh, that this world and it, it, its darkness is covering them over and then they go down in the wrong direction and they get themselves in, in trouble and they end up on the other side of this darkness. But God says we can go to bridge. We can go to bridge across over to them and, and through love bring them into a community that cares for them. So the, the mission really of the church, the mission is to mobilize people to love. If we do, we discover the heart of Exodus. And the heart of Exodus is being liberated to love, to love God and to love people. And that kind of love can transform the world. Amen. Let's do a turn to our final hymn. It is hymn number 239. Jesus is coming. <laughs>